If I told you traditional agriculture was on the brink of a massive shift towards autonomy with machine learning robots doing the bulk of all the harvesting, you'd probably make me prove it. So come on then. Say hello to a robot designed to scan and test conditions of corn, a lettuce harvester that autonomously slices with water, a robot that hoes a mean row, a robotic arm to pick apples, you get it. They're everywhere. But as cool as these are, many are still in very early research or development. Your tip-off was the computer on the field. They are not as dustproof as you'd hope. We're in the lab at Blue River Technology to talk about its farm bots. The first being a computer vision based field machine designed to weed lettuce rows. It got its start because thinning out lettuce rows is normally a labor and time intensive process. They want to have a, a plant about every 10 inches so that a lettuce head can form. If you put them any closer than that, the, the plants grow into each other and actually they, they deform the heads and they can even end up killing each other uh, in, in the process of trying to grow. I feel like vegetarians especially should know that even lettuce is a killer. <laughs> I feel like that's important information, but anyways. A few years in, Blue River has gained a few rows on its machine as a service weeding bot and has a solid market share, charging about $165 per acre. Somewhere around 10% of the lettuce being produced in the U.S. is produced by our machine. So it's a, it's a pretty significant amount. The bot is used around Salinas, California, which is important for lots of reasons. If you recently ate celery, lettuce, spinach, or carrots, it probably grew right here. There are something like 400 specialty crops grown in the state. California grows the raw food people eat, not so much the crops grown for animal feed or a lot of processing. Let's leave the Midwestern Plains out of this for now. A former mayor of Salinas based his whole economic plan on coaxing Silicon Valley down to the Salinas Valley, partly because it's so hard to fill farm labor vacancies. Because of that, I certainly think over the next 10 years from now, I think, I think we're gonna be looking uh, at a lot more automation. So what we view it as, one, these are important steps to preserve a domestic food supply, local economies. But the interesting thing is these machines are more sophisticated. So you're gonna, you're gonna talk about a new workforce, higher skills, higher wages. So I think in agriculture's case, you're, you're really talking about a new collar economy. Automation is the frontier because farm kids are leaving and moving to cities, meaning family-owned farms are aging. And since the world population is forecast to hit 10 billion by 2050, there will be a lot more people to feed with fewer farmers doing the work. Why aren't you letting me do this video game? Oh, do you want to do the video game? Yes, I would this like see to see how good you are driving here, Gary. Well, you've already messed me up, so I'm going to turn back around. I'm just doing circles in my truck. You're doing circles. The Western Growers Association built a startup accelerator for agricultural technology in Salinas, the only one it manages in the country. It even brings in established companies to tap the U.S. market. TrackMap is one such company, is based out of New Zealand, and offers a software and hardware setup that lets big operators check in on whether the right fields were treated. Farmers have always been innovators. You know, it's not always seen by people outside of agriculture, but there's ongoing innovation across the board, and always has been, and just like every other industry, there are early adopters and there is the middle of the road and there are people who come in late. But what I think I, I see happening in particular at the moment is the worldwide shortage of skilled and semi-skilled labour in agriculture is driving growers, they can't continue doing what they've done in the past. Which brings us back to the traditional hand rearing of vegetables and fruit. It turns out solving for lettuce weeding is only fun for so long. You are looking at Blue River Technologies' first field test of its new crop spraying robot in Texas. 
The company's AI and machine learning software is able to recognize weeds and cotton plants distinctly, then apply chemicals to only the weed, not the entire field. In case you didn't know it, that would be a huge change for agriculture. Huge. A tremendous, a tremendous revolutionary way of thinking about agriculture. It reduces the amount of inputs. In the case of herbicides, by a factor of 10, we can do more or less the same thing in insecticides and pesticides. We can save on seed costs. We can save in the impact that we have to the environment. Uh, right now, we are, frankly, overusing chemistry. We are using about 80% of the chemicals we use don't end up in the right place. Since the average mid-sized farmer with, say, 700 acres will spend about $100,000 to $130,000 spraying herbicides to kill weeds, fertilizer to encourage growth, and insecticides to kill bugs, spraying only the weed would mean a farmer's cost for that chemical would be reduced by a factor of 10. Harad says right now, it's like the sprayer prints weeds with a black ink cartridge. The next round, he's gunning for color. Here's my dream. I want to see every single plant and figure out, okay, you're, you're a weed, we'll spray you with herbicide. You're a crop, okay, you seem to be a little bit low in your nitrogen, so we'll give you a little bit of nitrogen. And you know what? One of the, your leaves is having a little bit of insect problems, so I'll give you, in that area of the plant, I'll put some insecticide to, to cover you. And with the optimum amount of chemicals, not, not the maximum amount, if you use this uh, this approach that we're talking about, where we see every plant and we understand the needs of every, every crop, every weed, we can spray the appropriate amounts and get the maximum output from every plant. The lab's mock field has a plastic crop to trick the software into thinking they're weeds or cotton. Did it think your GoPro was a weed? Mm, not quite. For this test run, it thinks my GoPro is cotton. Maybe the robots just want to harvest more technology. That's it's what possible. it's telling you. Or it wants to protect its own laying there in the field. It doesn't want to spray water on it because... Better. <laughs> Blue River continues to refine software, work on spray splatter and more, as it also ramps up how many pictures the program has learned. It's at about 1 million photos and has about 40 contractors labeling photos of each kind of plant to bring the intelligence up to a goal of 10 million pictures. Blue River Technology actually started out intending to make an autonomous lawnmower, which makes sense given that Harad's experience was first gained working on self-steering tractor technology that locks into a direction using GPS coordinates. That technology has been around for years, though John Deere, Case, and all the rest are working on the true autonomous article as well. There are just a few fully autonomous farm bots so far. This almond and walnut harvester by Orchard Machinery Corporation should jostle you into the future with an autonomous harvesting shake that means business. Yet still, a person inside the cab needs to steer at the end of each row before relaxing again. Only about 20 of these machines are in field so far. Here, chick, chick, chick. Oh, oh, they have sharp beaks. I'm not a farmer. On the picturesque Potrero Nuevo farm outside Half Moon Bay, the owners dodged hiring seasonal workers by employing two farm managers full time. The majority of the farm's organic produce goes to feeding low income and homeless people who also do some of the work maintaining it. The farm's small paying customer group even harvests its own produce. Do you think that robots will replace workers in the field one day? Oh sure, of course. Will it be all crops, all farms? No, it won't. Given the scale of our farm, it would never make sense to do something like that, even if something were available today. But if we had 100 acres, 200, 300 acres, especially something that might be, you know, a monocrop, well, then it does make sense. While I can imagine it happening, I'm, I'm not, it doesn't mean I'm 100% behind it. I'm going to go out on a limb and predict fully autonomous farming bots in Blue River's future so those machines can ditch their human tractor driver operators and just go for it. And by the way, my stepdad is a Midwestern grains farmer and Glenn, they're making soybean bots next.